Hello everyone. Welcome back to Garden Talk with Teresa. We have a very informative show for you today. We are going to go over a lot of information. We're going to start with what you can do with some herbs and plants that you have grown throughout the year and what you can do with them to salvage them for the rest of the year. Uh, we'll go over some stuff that you may have in your backyard, what you can do with them, how you can arrange them, uh, different containers that you can use, um, stuff that you can maybe acquire, maybe share with neighbors or uh, help yourself to some neighbors' greeneries. Um, some other projects I can show you, what to do with some of your herbs, some of the things that you've been growing throughout the year and that you can dry, how you can repurpose them, how you can use them to decorate. Again, different containers that you can use around the house, indoors or outdoors, great hostess gifts, and again, some other ideas of what to do with some of these dried plants, uh, how you can even accessorize them even more. And firstly, we are gonna go to a video clip of a nice trip that we took to the Taunton Community Gardens in Taunton. And what a great, great project. I learned a lot about the location. I even learned a lot about some new items that I've never personally grown myself. So hope you enjoy this. And I'm gonna go right to the video clip and we'll see you in a bit. Thank you. Hello, this is Teresa Mello with Garden Talk with Teresa. And I am here with Carol Doherty. And the reason we are here at the Taunton Community Gardens is because we are celebrating the 10th year anniversary of this beautiful location and this great project. So Carol is gonna share some of the information on how this all came about and what this is all about and how people can get involved and all the good things that have come out of this project. So Carol. So, thank you so much, Teresa, for inviting me to be here. And uh, a little later on in the show, a couple of the gardeners will talk mm -hmm. about what they've been doing over the years here at the Taunton Community Garden. 10th year anniversary, well, the garden idea really started with a conversation with the then mayor, Tom Hoy. I went to him and I said, uh, my mayor, what, what do you think of having a community garden in the city of Taunton? He said, that's a great idea. I said, okay, do you have any land? Well, I mean, who asks for land, right? Okay. Nonetheless, he said, put on your coat, because it was dead February. Hop in the car and up to the Taunton Nursing Home we can. And so the garden is located on Norton Avenue uh, between the, what was the Taunton Nursing Home and the Western Little League. And at the time, a great big open space for, uh, for gardens. And so initially, uh, what we had to do was to find out whether or not the community was even interested right. in participating. So the city and the school department put up a survey on their websites to ask people what they thought and the response was very positive and overwhelming and right after that we had a workshop to talk with people about what this would mean for them if they came to garden here and so we started out here in this wonderful space with 15 garden plots and then that was expanded to 30 garden plots. Uh, we of course had to fence it in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we wanted the garden to be organic. We didn't want it to, we didn't want people to bring pesticides right. or uh, chemically treated uh, fertilizers to the garden. And so it was important for us to have posts, as you can see, that are made of cedar and not pressed wood because I, as I understand, pressed wood is made with some toxic substances. Could be toxic. So, uh, uh, cedar posts are very much more expensive mm -hmm. than, uh, than pressed wood, so it was like, where do we get the money from? And the mayor had said to me, as long as it doesn't cost the city any money, it's Ooh, perfectly okay. all right with him. So, there's an organization, and I think it still does exist, where our waste treatment company, mm -hmm. uh, they created a, a community, a neighborhood group of people to talk about what the then dump site, I guess, what would mean to the neighborhood uh, in the Whittington section. And the company gave that group of people money to spend on community projects that were environmentally sound, sustainable. And so I went to them with a proposal and asked for $2,500 for fencing. And they gave it to us. And we had to do a little talking about that, but they gave us the $2,500 and so and to as a starter kit. Mm -hmm. uh, so we dug 15 gardens, uh, lived with those for a couple of years, went back to the neighborhood 
committee and said we really want to put a sprinkler system in the garden. So we had hoses and we used the water, this, we used city water, thank, thank, thanks to the city. Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't, they haven't charged us yet for okay. over the past 10 years to use the water. <laughs> so uh, we thought though a sprinkler system would be very convenient right. for people, especially in the heat of summer. Mm -hmm. So we then got $6,500 from that Excellent. to put in that sprinkler Huge system. Oh. And uh, since that time, of course, right from the very beginning, we charge a small fee mm -hmm. uh, to the gardeners for give them compost and mulch, uh, obviously the protection of the fence, this lovely location. We were able to buy this shed so that they can bring in their tools and mm -hmm. leave them here, which is a convenient uh, convenience for them. And uh, the rest is history. So the vision uh, had been initially to expand, and we did, twice over, and then it was to expand outward, and we just didn't get around to doing that. Mm -hmm. and then, maybe expand into the rest of the community with mm -hmm. multiple community gardens right. across the city of Toronto. Right, right. Now this is, it's a beautiful location, it's an exciting project, and yeah, I, I can definitely see you expanding. Hopefully that will happen. And we will be speaking in a little while with a couple of the gentlemen that do help to maintain these gardens and a few of the gardeners themselves. The um, question that I had was as far as um, your involvement with um, workshops or getting the community involved, how did you um, reach out to individual gardeners to get them involved or how did you notify the public? That oh, that's a good question, Teresa. We, uh, first of all, we formed a committee, mm -hmm. uh, an advisory committee, mm -hmm. I guess, who were made up of half a dozen uh, interested people, none of whom were gardeners at the time, actually. and. The committee's responsibility was to plan activities for the gardeners, and so we held a workshops initially about composting, and a woman who's well known in the community around environmental issues, Karen Coolis, uh, would come regularly mm -hmm. over the years to uh, have these workshops to teach us about how important it, it is to have worms in your garden, mm -hmm. for example, about how composting could occur with the waste that we take from mm -hmm. the garden. And so that workshop happened. Uh, we've had workshops where people bring uh, food mm -hmm. uh, so that we can just have a social oh, activity. Nice. Uh, one of the gardeners, Ida Tomei, will tell you about mm -hmm. the, the sort of workshop that she ran. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the gardeners really, really enjoyed was walking around and looking at other people's mm -hmm. things that exactly. other people That's planted. And they, mm -hmm to say, well, what's that, or how come your squash is bigger than my squash? And That's how you Ida, learn. Ida's garden was always absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. She grew everything, and I don't think it, anything ever rotted on the vine. <laughs> and so she was the one who would walk people through the gardens Great. and tell them what was growing and how to grow it best, what to do and what not. Excellent. That's excellent. So you learn from each other. You had people with different gardening experiences, with different backgrounds, different levels. And if they were growing something that someone else wasn't growing, they just learned from each other, and that's excellent. That's a great idea, because when you're at home and you're doing your own gardening, you don't have that opportunity um, other than going online. But in a closed space like this, within this location, you can just see everyone's garden is very different. And so, every, uh, every year we um, would have a workshop in February as we were starting mm -hmm. up the season people who were gardening would come together. If we had some empty plots, we mm -hmm. would invite new people to come, right. just so that they'd know one another. Mm -hmm. And some people wanted to keep the same plot. If there were plots that were empty, they might want to change mm -hmm. the plot. But by and large, I would say a good 70% of the gardeners are people that have come year after year. Mm -hmm. after year. It's a great space. You yes. hear the birds, see the deer, yes. chase away the rabbits. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And you had mentioned something about a meet and greet in the past. Yes, that, that, that reads in the beginning. That was what you did in February. That's, that's okay. what we were doing in okay. February, so that people okay. would uh, come and grab a cup of coffee and a cookie and uh, learn about the rules that we had to follow. Because the nursing home was here at the time, mm -hmm. and so it was really important for don't bring your dog, don't bring your radio, right. no smoking in the garden. Mm -hmm. You know that that kind of right. thing was really important to preserve the space, to make it pleasant for everyone, mm -hmm. and especially with the nursing home nearby. Who, by the way. Um, the residents would look out the window and watch what we were doing, and I think exactly. that and they'd sit out on the veranda there, and I think that they really enjoyed the activity mm -hmm. that was going on. 
Yeah, and, and actually an extra security, a little protection too. They were always exactly. keeping an eye out on the garden too for the little predators. That's excellent. Great. Exactly. I remember it. So we keep the, the gates locked. Once the produce starts to grow, we keep the gates locked mm -hmm. to prevent wanderers from coming in and marauding the garden. And right. one year when we were just beginning uh, the garden, uh, we noticed that when the tomatoes were getting really ripe or the, it was time for the squash to be picked, they would disappear. Mm. So we, and people were watching, and so we set out to see if we could, uh, we could identify the culprit, and we did. And when we asked, well, you know, if you really need something, just ask and we'd be happy to share what we have. And she said, well, it says community garden, that isn't the community mm -hmm. invited. Yeah, that's her. <laughs> Some explanation is needed. Interesting. But, yeah, yeah, that's, kind of, yeah, you can look at it differently. You have, have a sense of humor. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But uh, yeah, thank you very much, Carol. I've enjoyed this. I'm going to speak a little bit more with a few other people that are affiliated here with the gardens. But again, I want to thank Carol. When Carol had mentioned about the 10 year anniversary of this garden, I mean, what a perfect, perfect segment to be here to celebrate this. This is just so great. And again, we'll show some more slides going forward, and you can see the evolution of the gardening process. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. I'm delighted. Thank you. Hi, this is Teresa Mello, and I'm here with Dan Lefebvre. He's actually one of the gardeners, and he's going to tell us a little bit about why he's here and why he loves to garden. <laughs> so yeah. we were actually excited to become a part of this. Um, my partner Christopher and I removed to Taunton about eight years ago. Um, and prior to uh, Taunton, we lived in downtown Boston in the south end. Okay. Um, and we were in an apartment for 12 years with no outdoor property at all. Oh boy. Um, we're both kind of children of farming families, mm -hmm. not necessarily farming, but gardening families. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I grew up on, a, on an acre of land and we always had a huge garden, the plum, strawberry, and corn, mm -hmm. and potatoes, and all those. And there was nothing like picking a tomato off of the, off of the vine right. or something. Right. Um, so when we got to Taunton, um, in our house, the first thing we did was build a greenhouse, put some raised beds in the backyard, and this was in October, or so we were getting ready for the next year. Um, but very quickly we discovered the community garden in Taunton, um, because we'd been on a waiting list in Boston and we were never able to get a plot. Wow, um, so there were that many people that were interested in gardening out there too. Wow. Absolutely. Um, and so when we found out about Carol and the community garden mm -hmm. here, uh, we signed up right away. Um, and I remember our first plot was actually over there. It was a little small 10, uh, mm -hmm. 8 by 12 plot, yeah. the smallest one they had. Um, and we, we practiced for the whole morning. We were doing all kinds of really creative things, trying to maximize our space. Um, and since then, gosh, that was eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so since then, we've gone from that little plot to a 20 by 20 to two 20 by 20s now. Um, and then we actually planted the little corn patch as well this year. Um, and even the pumpkin patch that we mm -hmm. donated to the garden as well. Oh, great. Pumpkin patch. Oh, perfect. Yeah. The community garden in the community garden. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Great. And then as far as you also help out with some of the maintenance, general maintenance. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, the, more involved, the more involved we got in the garden, um, we started to go to a couple of meetings mm -hmm. and invited us to some of the workshops. And um, when I found out what we were paying for uh, some of the maintenance, um, here we've got a whole group of people that right. like to be outside. Um, we kind of stepped up and we're like, why can't we just have a lawnmower for ourselves? And, you know, we bring the weed whacker from home. Oh, and nice. uh, and uh, we do our best to maintain it. It, uh, it can be challenging sometimes when you've got three gardens. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's going, but uh, we do our best. And, and when we can't make it, um, it's been really great. There have been other gardeners that right. have stepped up and done the mowing for the week. That kind of thing. Tell us about these plants. Okay. These are items that I'm not familiar with, even though I'm, a, I'm an avid gardener, but I have never grown them myself, so I would love for you to explain a little bit more of what you were doing. All right. We well, most plant. of what we grow here is uh, tomatoes and peppers. Okay. Um, and we try to stay away from some of the things that the woodlands, you know, the, the gophers and those mm -hmm. kind of things. Because even with the fence, it's hard to maintain. Right. Um, but tomatillos, um, these are tomatillo plants, okay. um, which is a green tomato that comes, it grows in a paper husk. Um, and it's the primary tomato that goes in um, a roasted salsa verde um, and back in a lot of Mexican dishes, that kind of thing. Um, and with the peppers and all, uh, it just seemed like a natural fit. Mm -hmm. um, they're good for later in the season too because they like to be warmer, uh, cock-dry temperatures mm -hmm. in 
August, they tend to do their best. Okay. So now we're kind of at the end of season. But they're still, right. you know, this has been a crazy year for gardening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they seem to still be producing. So we've got a little bit that we've Excellent. Kept. I'll Excellent. probably be able to get another batch. It's also been a lot of So do you have your like, award-winning recipe uh, um, I do for the, actually also? for the habanero jam. I make a Ooh, habanero jelly jam. that, that, that I've won contests with. So. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so the community garden also has award-winning, uh, right, produce. That's excellent. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. yeah, this is just, it's a, it's a gorgeous plant too. Yeah. And the great thing is that you have, you still have stuff where a lot of the plots you see here are already on the past side. But uh, we will have the photos that you can see of when the gardens have started, but there's still a lot happening here. Yeah, this plot had 48 cucumber plants in the summer. 48. Um, and I did over 100, uh, over 100 yards of pickles from them. Wow. So, yeah. What type of pickle? Uh, I do a garlic dill, a sriracha dill, and then bread butter. Bread that's butter. My that's, yeah, that's my favorite, <laughs> the bread butter. Now, did you do a vertical or were they just regular? These were just regular. Okay. You can still kind of see where the mounds yeah. are. Yeah, okay. Did you mention you do? I mounds for plant each, yeah. and they just Great. took over the whole thing. And that's one of the reasons why we do it at the uh, community garden is you get the sprawl space. Right. Right. At home, right. in a raised bed, you can't really have right. sprawl space. Right. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. excellent. Great. Yeah. So you maximized what you did of this small space, and I just I love this. This is so creative yeah. too. I'm and exciting to come release. back, you know, because we got the potatoes left. We're, exactly. We're just pulling those up. Right. And we've still got some peppers going, yeah. so I'll be able to make more of that. Uh, yep. Yeah, you're gonna go home and start cooking again. Yep. Okay. <laughs> excellent. Well, great. It was so nice oh, to nice meet, meet you. you. Thank you so much. And we'll be in touch again, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, Thank you. If anybody does want to get involved with the garden later, I'm actually the person to contact as well. Okay, um, and how I would they? Who has what plot and okay, well. and how would, would that be through the Facebook page? Because also the community garden does have a Taunton community garden Facebook page. Uh, uh, Facebook, yeah, the Facebook page is probably the easiest way. Um, okay. Message, or if you reach out to Carol, she can connect us. Okay, perfect. Great information. Thank you for, for adding that. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Back again, Teresa Mello with Garden Talk with Teresa, and we're here with another gardener. This is Ida Tomei, and she happens to be one of the very first gardeners that jumped onto this great project uh, when it became available. Sure, and yeah. she's been here for the full 10 years. Yes. And she's gonna tell you all the things that she has grown in this space. And this is a, how, how big is this space here? Uh, it's a 20 by 20. Excellent. And, uh, and how many different things have you grown in, in just a small space? Oh my God, I, I've grown so much stuff. Over here I had potatoes, mm -hmm. they were beautiful. On this side I had uh, onions. Mm -hmm. Over here I had uh, 70 um, plants of tomatoes. Wow. I had so many tomatoes. Different I made, varieties. Yeah, yeah, different varieties. I made a lot of uh, salsa, a lot Oof. of spaghetti sauce. Yes. And I'm still... Uh, Working over here in my beans. You're still picking beans. I, I love I'm this. I'm still picking beans. She's still picking they were them. Beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Uh, on the back here, I had the shorter beans, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. they did well. Mm -hmm. Kale. Kale. Yes. The two kinds of kale. Yeah. I had a lot of uh, different uh, kinds of um, peppers. I had oh, the perfect. banana peppers. I nice. I canned them. I had uh, hot peppers. I made some uh, sauce with mm -hmm. it. It was a good year. It was yeah. a good year. I had the beautiful parsley. Excellent. Thyme. Yeah. I dry thyme for the yes. winter. Oh, you do? Oh, yes. Awesome. I love that. I yeah, I that's another. Too. Yes, I'm going to be getting into that a little bit later on, too, as far as drying herbs and that yeah. type of thing. Excellent. Great. And you enjoy doing this? I love doing it. Is this your I, stress relief? Or, yes. or just you just love the produce and everything that you I, get out well, of it? Yeah, I love the fact that it's. I grow it, mm -hmm. it's organic and. I come here after work every other day, pull weeds because you really have to keep. Yeah, you stay on top of yeah, it. You yeah, you have to be uh, yeah. on top of it and talk to other gardeners. Oh, yeah. And we I, we visit, every time I come here, I go, I do a tour of the whole mm -hmm. uh, place and I just Kinda love compare. it. It's, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like being out in nature. It's just so great to compare and see. I love the idea of being able to see all the different gardens, what everybody else is growing, yeah. and you learn something new, you know, like the tomatillos that we were just talking about. You know, I've never grown that, and it just, it's amazing, and the beautiful plants, too, so. Yeah, and then sometimes we, if I don't have something, I share with other people. Oh, true. They share with me, and it's it's really a community true. garden. 
Excellent, and I love the community garden within the community garden because he just mentioned that not only do you have a perennial community garden, but you also have a little herb garden on the other yes. corner that is kind of a community that everyone can participate and take from yeah. as well. I love that. Excellent. Excellent. And this year was a really good year for everyone. It yeah. Was, it was beautiful. The weather was great. And this is just a beautiful, nice, quiet place to be. So yeah. I can see how you love coming after work and just uh, kind of chill out. So I love excellent. it, yes. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you so much thank for taking for the time over. to talk to me. Thank you for your yes. time. No, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we had a great time putting that together. And I'd again like to thank Carol and Ida and Dan for taking the time to show us what they have done and how great this project has grown. And also another shout out to Doug, our videographer, uh, who helped us with the taping and editing. And next we're gonna show you some slides of some items and different aspects of the garden throughout the growing season that you didn't actually see during the videotaping. Uh, here we have the shed at the community garden and like they mentioned during the taping, they do have some supplies that can be used by the participants at the community garden. Um, it's very friendly, very user friendly. It's a great, great idea. You can see a little bit of the irrigation that they have available, the hosing, um, and the beautiful mural that just brightens up the spot. It has grown quite a bit and it's just so pretty and we'll show a little bit more as far as how you can actually decorate uh, with ornaments your own little space. It's not all about the greens and just the gardening, it's decorating as well. Okay, uh, next here we have uh, Carol Doherty who we're going to be, you spoke with er earlier, and uh, some of the participants in the gardening. Um, again, you can pick your own spots. Uh, there may be a waiting list. There may be people that come back from year to year. There may be people that keep the same spot. So um, sign up, check on their Facebook page if you're interested, and take it from there. And here we just have someone's plot. I know this specific photo, I believe, her husband came and helped with the rototilling in advance and she does all the gardening and planting uh, but he helps with a lot of the prep work ahead of time so she has her mounds and her rows perfectly set and ready to start her plants uh, and it's a great like they mentioned in the video it's a great idea to have this community garden not just for the obvious reasons but to learn from each other and you see so many different types of gardening and each year you can add or change or share with each other. Okay and here's another view of the plots again early in the season before things are filling in. Um, the stakes are ready in some of the locations and again these gardens are all completely fenced in. Uh, there is some wildlife in the area. <laughs> But for the most part, they, uh, they don't have a lot of problems. And here is one beautiful garden. And it is accented with some marigolds, which if you aren't aware, they do help to deter some, some rodents and pests from the garden. Uh, some animals typically don't like plants that have a strong pungent odor. And even though to us, they don't really have a pungent odor, but to certain animals they do. So even in my own family, my dad used to plant the marigolds all around the garden. Um, they look beautiful, it made a nice pretty border, and it also did the job. Okay, here we have some more items here. And again, the stakes that were done and put in place earlier, they're all set. I believe these are peppers or beans and uh, someone likes their beans. <laughs> and then she has some tomatoes and some herbs growing in between, which is a really, really nice, satisfying thought when you see that this is something that you grew yourself. Okay, and again, it's not just about the vegetables and the herbs. There are flowers as well. Um, here you have some dahlias and some other items. And as they mentioned, they do have a couple of spaces, one that is a community flower garden, kind of a cut garden where you can come and either just enjoy 
and then eventually cut from the garden, but mostly for you to enjoy when you come in and take care of your own space. And then they also have a raised bed for uh, some herbs, which is, which is part of the community uh, space. So you can have your own space, and then there's a few spaces that can be used by everyone. Okay, and here we have someone who loves sunflowers, which I do as well. And this is a great specimen of a sunflower. Sunflowers, as you may know, come in different sizes. Uh, you have some small ones, some low growing, and then you have the tall, tall stalks like these. Uh, some people like to keep them out there because eventually the birds will come and eat from the seeds. Or you can kind of take them down, let them dry out yourself, and save the seeds to plant for next year. Uh, the only problem with that is you'd have to keep an eye on it and make sure that you take it down before the birds get to it. I know we had some that, uh, we had some large and some small sunflowers and some of the small sunflowers uh, got eaten by some of the birds, so they were pretty quick. So you gotta keep an eye on it and uh, make sure you get at it and take it down so you can have your seeds for next year and just let them dry out. And here are some of the rewards of the gardens. Um, this is great. This is a great crop. Someone here loves tomatoes, a lot of different types of tomatoes, as I do in my family. Um, again, it's so rewarding to see all the things that you yourself have grown. Um, share it with friends. Uh, I know we've had uh, different dinner parties of meals that were just grown from the garden, whether it be the berries, you know, fruits, vegetables, um, the salads, even some flowers that you can throw into salads that are edible, um, just with the intent of making a meal out of things that you just grew yourself or from your yard. And some more of those beans. Uh, very nice beans, healthy beans, jalapenos, and some other peppers there, and you've got the basil, love basil. Absolutely love the basil. Um, and again, if it's something that you don't grow yourself, someone else in the community garden is growing something and then you learn about that and you either have an excess, they share with each other, or you find out about it and you grow it yourself the following year. So it's great. Like I said, I learned some things. There were some items that I have never grown before. Um, so I learned and I'm actually gonna try a few things that are new myself next year. Okay, and here we come to the ornamental aspect of the gardens. Uh, each plot is done however they want to do it. As you can see in the background, we have some pink flamingos, some little white picket fencing. Um, there are different windmills. There are wind chimes. And then here we have the nice truck, which is really, really sweet. So it's a really nice, nice trip to come and visit. Again, you come to tend to your own garden but you walk around, you check out everybody else's garden. It's like going through a park, basically, uh, with all the different plots. And I hope you enjoyed all of these photos. There's a lot more to see. Uh, again, these are just some of the photos because of the time of year that we filmed, so that you can see what happens basically from the start to the finish, okay? And now we're gonna be going to a short break, and we're gonna come right back. Chris Domine is a husband, father, and athlete because a kidney transplant gave him a second chance at life, made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you can make possible. Learn more and sign up as a donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Welcome back. Hope you've enjoyed our show so far. And now we're gonna go into some items that you hopefully have around your house and what you can do this time of year to extend the life of some of the items that you've carefully been growing throughout the year. Um, here I have a type of herb. This is thyme. And what you can do is you could just cut your herbs, either pull them right by the roots or just cut them right at the base. And when they're nice and green, just hang them up in little groupings like this. Whether you use twine, rope, ribbon. Uh, I actually have a whole bunch of these in my barn and I have them over by the chicken coop and it's a nice dry place for them to dry and they're indoors. And again, you can either have them hanging somewhere to use as ornamental, uh, and they smell great on top of that. And again, we were talking about deterring certain pests and insects with the magnolias. 
Herbs do the same thing. There are certain herbs that are potent and insects don't like. So again, you have them hanging around your house and it's gonna help as far as being a repellent. Okay, so again, this is, a, this is time and you can hang them out for decorative purposes or hang them so that you could use them obviously for cooking and different things down the line. Something like this, once it's fully dried, you would just take them, and I don't wanna, I'm gonna try not to make too much of a mess, although it would be fun. Um, you just take them and you basically crush them, okay? Or you can mull them and you can bag them or put them in a jar and label them and use them throughout the year. They're great, they'll keep, and you're adding spices that you grew yourself, which is so great. And again, you can do it with any type of herbs. Something here we have is a mint. It's a type of mint, it's actually spearmint. And again, it's great, it's so potent, it's very, I wish it was smell-o-vision available, but this smells amazing. And it's been hanging for a little while. And again, I used a little rope, because it's a little, little thicker than the other herbs. And it just crushes in your hand. And just put it in a container, and again, you have the spearmint, you know, for sauces or different things or different drink mixes. Um, it's amazing. Or again, just hang them like this for ornamental purposes. Again, you can use ribbons, um, fancy ribbons, just things like this, rope, depending on where you have it, basement, garage, uh, barn, or even in your house. I actually had a small sprig of herbs that I had left over, and I had, it was maybe a quarter of this, and I had it hanging in my kitchen window with a cute little ribbon on it, and it was just, a, it gave some nice aroma, and it was very ornamental, and I got a lot of compliments on it too. So again, your herbs, Anything that you want to salvage, whether you want to use it for cooking throughout the year, uh, something just for ornamental. And there are different herbs, too, that you can have around the house just for scent. Um, put them in a dish kind of along the lines of a potpourri, and then you'll have that scent the rest of the year. Uh, there is something that you can do if the scent does tend to wear, if you're using it for that purpose. And we're going to go into that with sachets. You can make sachets uh, with I typically like to use cotton material, but it's a way to keep the nice aroma and keep it together so it doesn't make a mess. Uh, if you put them in jars to use as herbs, obviously they're gonna stay nice and fresh in the jars. But when you wanna have the aroma, you wanna use something that's a thin material, something that's not too, too, too thick, because you want the aroma to come through, okay? And by making the little sachets, you can put the sachets either in a closed drawer uh, what I like the sachets for is uh, sleeping. <laughs> um, I have a little problem sleeping, turning off the old uh, brain at night. And there are certain herbs, and again, these were at one time hung, dried, and then crushed and put together. So these three herbs are great for helping you sleep. Um, obviously, we know lavender is a nice uh, calming effect. So is lemon balm and chamomile. So I actually have those three here. So again, I've acquired these. I didn't grow these myself, but they were, again, grown and dried and salvaged. And what we do is, you can put them in a sachet, and it's real easy to make. You can do this for yourself. You could do it as a gift item. Um, and again, you can put them in drawers, hang them. I actually hang mine on the bedpost, because that way when you go to sleep, you can actually smell the lavender. And what you can do here, we've just used like a six by six uh, piece of material. You can make them larger, or smaller. And the idea is to just fold it in half because you want to create a bag. So if you're handy with sewing, you can just do this on a machine. Just sew the two sides because you've already got one sealed with a seam. And you want to leave just one opening, okay? If you're not handy with a machine, you can sew this by hand. It's not a lot of work to do, okay? So again, you want to make a little, little baggie, like a little pocket. And again, you can make these smaller, you can make them larger. It's completely up to you. And again, any design, if you want to have it match your decor, match your bedroom, match whatever room it's going to be in. This is something you can hide, put somewhere out of sight. And again, just to have the aroma come out. And after you've sewn them, you, it's great if you can do a bunch of these. You just kind of do them step by step at a time. So you're sitting at the machine at one time, or you're sewing at one time, and cutting at one time, and then filling them at a different time, and then doing the finished work at a different time. So turn it inside out, and you have your nice little baggie, okay, with the opening. Again, if you're handy with sewing, then you'll know that you would actually make the seam 
with the top folded in, and you would actually make that seam before you actually sewed around the outside. So basically, it would be making a seam. Actually, it would be this way. <laughs> make the seam like this across the top, and then fold like this to do your seam here and here. And then you already have the seam so it doesn't unravel. That's, that's the main purpose. But if you're not, again, handy handy with sewing, just take it and fold it in. You can either do it again by hand or just fold it in low enough. And I'll show you how to finish that off later on. So if you want to make a nice little small bag, just lower it in. And then you'll take your herb and you'll put some herbs in the bag. Now the key to this is that you don't want to fill the bag with your herbs. The point being that you want to have enough space in the bag for airflow. So if you have it so compact and tight, the aroma isn't going to come through. It will, it will in the short term, but it won't in the long term. So you want to leave a little bit of room for the air to flow through. Okay, That way you can either refresh it down the line or just shake it up and then it, it kind of stimulates the aroma again. So again, don't fill up the bags. If you want a small one, just put a little bit in the baggie. If you want a bigger bag, just keep the bag a little larger so you have room to close it. But again, just maybe fill it halfway with your herb so you have enough room for the air to flow through. Okay? And again, you can do this in different colors, different patterns. You can do sports, you name it. It's just, it's endless. As endless as the different types of material that you can find. Okay? And what I've done here is just taken it and close it with a little ribbon, and that's all you do. You can tell my herbs are way down here. They're way down here. So it has plenty of room, again, for airflow. And you can take this and either, like I said, tie it onto a bedpost or just keep it in a little bow and then put it in your drawer. You know, it keeps your, your uh, underwear, your <laughs> whatever, uh, nice and fresh. Okay, so you won't have any musty, musty smell. So here's another one that we did. And again, put the fancy ribbon on it and you can hang it. You can hang it in a closet even. You can hang it um, on a doorknob, you name it. You can put it anywhere that you want a little bit of a scent or aroma. And what you can do, if you don't have a refill, any more of your herbs to fill these, what you can do is just take some essential oils, and it's the same thing. Um, you have the item, just open the bag. You, you might want to put it in a little dish um, to shake it up a little bit because of the oils sticking. Give it a nice little shake, mix it around, and then pour it back into your sachet, and then cinch it again or just put a couple of drops in and shake it up if you're going to put just a tiny bit. Okay, so either way. So to refresh, if you don't have any more of your herbs or to hold you over till you can get some more, just use essential oils. It's basically the same thing, just in a more potent, concentrated um, form. Okay, so that is basically the steps for the sachet. Again, any type of material. A six by six is what we used here. Okay, you can go smaller, you can go larger. Maybe for closet you want to go a little bit bigger. Um, but for the most part, this is kind of a useful, handy, uh, manageable size. Okay, and the cinching, the ribbon just to coordinate, which makes it look really good. And again, a gift item, um, add it into a basket, put it somewhere else. It's great for a nursery, near a diaper bag, anything like that. So think of anywhere that you'd like a nice aroma, a nice scent. All right. And we're going to take another quick break, and then we will be right back. She is more than just someone I do errands with. He's more than just a companion. He's a friend. I take her to doctor appointments, but we do so much more. Uh, she's like a daughter. She's like family to me. She's someone I love to laugh with. She's the reason to get out of bed and get moving. Without her as my senior companion, I wouldn't be able to get out of my house. You can help make independence a reality. Join Senior Corps Senior Companions at SeniorCorps.gov. Welcome back to Garden Talk with Teresa. During this segment, we're going to be talking about the dried flowers. We were talking about herbs prior to this, 
and we're going to go into different types of plants that you can find around your yard. Uh, one item that I wanted to add to the herb portion was when we were sp speaking about uh, doing something ornamental with the herbs. I love birdhouses. I used to collect them. And again, this is something that I just had hanging in my greenhouse. And I just took some of the herbs, dried them, hung them. And again, for lack of space, I put them inside the birdhouse. It's something really neat and it keeps it contained. Uh, nothing's going to make it fall apart. No, no little critters are going to get at it. And it's just a pretty filler for something that would be ornamental and would be hanging on my wall anyway. Okay, so just an idea, something else you can do with your herbs. All right. And following this, what I'd like to show you are some of the different plants that you can grab around your yard. Again, this afternoon I drove around and came home, walked the property, and I'm thinking, what can I get even now? Some of these items I've picked weeks ago and held on to them, knowing at some point I'll find something to do with them. If not, I'll eventually throw them out, but knowing I, I would find something to do with them because uh, I love cutting flowers throughout the year and putting them in pots and bringing them in the house. So what I did was I have a little collection of just what I found around the yard and again some of my customers yards where I was doing some trimming back and I held on to some things. Like here you have the cat mint and you can actually see it still has the lovely lavender color on it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Now you can, these were picked this afternoon and they're still flowering which is amazing. This was on a flower pot that was on the deck and I was talking about the sunflowers and again this wasn't picked early enough but as you can see the birds did get at it but if you have a nice little dry arrangement it's still pretty it's still something pretty it doesn't have many seeds left to it so I kept some others that I'm saving for seeds but this is something you can just put down and add to an arrangement um, as a little centerpiece okay and here what else do we have we have Black-eyed Susans. How pretty are black-eyed Susans? They're great when they're in bloom and the in-between phase, maybe they're not so pretty, but then once they turn that black and they have no more green, you have just this black pod and it's just so pretty and it makes such a statement, a nice black against all the other tans and beige that you have. Um, it's just a really, and you come, they come in different sizes obviously too and my ornamental grasses, which I have a few different varieties, and I went around and picked some of these, and how cute, and so fragile looking. Um, I know way back when all the ornamental grasses were all the rage and all of the uh, floor pots at one point, I think it was kind of towards the 70s, maybe early 80s, um, but just add a little bit here and there to something, or to an arrangement would look really, really pretty. And again, it's up to you I trim them nice and small to put them in a regular size vase, but if you want to put them on a floor vase or do something taller, a huge arrangement, obviously you cut them wherever you like to cut them, okay? And we have some more items here. Talk about color. Even drying out, these are beautiful. You can still see the vivid pink, so you can imagine what they looked like when they were in full bloom. Um, and what else do we have here? Okay. We have, and this I actually trimmed a few days ago. This is part of a butterfly bush, Bedalia. I love them, they're so pretty, but how nice is this? You don't even have to put too, too much. Cut a few of these, put this in a vase, vase, and it would be gorgeous. Add a few other things to it, and how pretty is this? You've got a little bit of the green, and then you've got your brown. Um, again, you can actually save some of this for seeds if you wanted to start something from scratch. But again, just for the ornamental, they grow pretty fast anyway, and they're pretty hardy. You can cut these way, way back down to the ground and they will come back in. So take advantage of it. Trim them and use them in arrangements. Again, whether you want to use a whole uh, tip of a branch like this or just little sprigs. Again, depending on the size of the container you have um, is where you would cut it and how you would use it. Okay. Now we also have here some of the silver that is dried white, which we're actually going to be using in a little while, and I'm going to show you how we're going to put this in an arrangement, something a little bit more Christmassy to get ready for the season. Uh, again, your yellow flowers, and of course, last but not least, allium. Uh, 
in one of our earlier episodes, we went to the green animal topiaries and Dan had shown us uh, how he takes some of these items from the gardens and they save them, dry them, and they actually use them in arrangements around the buildings and around the properties at the Preservation Society. So what we have here is the allium. They're beautiful plants. Um, I have a few and I would recommend if you, you have any space in your yard, grab an allium. They're gorgeous when they're in bloom, nice vivid, vivid colors. But when they dry out, what you actually have is what you see here. These are your alliums, okay? These big balls right here is your allium. It looks beautiful, just dried out and plain like this. What we did here is we've spray painted them. So you can spray paint them, again, any color you want, but thinking of the holidays coming up and arrangements that might be a little bit more timeless, you can keep maybe throughout the whole winter season and into the spring until you're ready to turn that, switch things out. Again, just spray, regular spray paint. The silver would go in a nice green arrangement or the gold. We actually did it in gold also. And how beautiful is this? And it's very, it's very delicate. You know, it's a dried flower. Uh, I wouldn't put this outside, I'd put this inside. Um, unless you wanted it just for a short term, say you're having a party and you want to dress up your outdoor window boxes or a pot right outside the front door. You can put these in for short term, because um, again, they won't last long term outside. But for the short term, they'd make a great uh, eye opener, you know, a nice statement piece when someone are coming in to your home. And again, you can cut these long, short, again, depending on the size of your container and how you want to use them. Uh, for this arrangement here, what I did was, because we have a long vase, I love my galvanized. Again, that's my farm background. I'll take anything rustic is what I prefer. Uh, so we just put them in here and I cut them nice and large. Uh, these were actually given to me by Carol, who you saw earlier in the videos. She grows the allium and uh, she asked if I could use them and absolutely I wasn't going to say no. So I definitely wanted to include it on this segment. But again, this is just a dried regular and this is what it looks like when you've got them spray painted. So it would add a nice pop of color if you had just a dried arrangement or again if you had some greenery and you just wanted a pop of some color whether it be gold, silver and again you can do other colors as well but I think the silver and the gold stands out a little bit for the holidays so again it's just worth having it's beautiful when you have them in the garden but because of the multiple uses and you can dry them and use them in the winter time absolutely get them. They're allium and you can get them as bulbs or as plants and they'll come back every year actually. So it's worth having. It's worth having. Um, again, this ornament here, arrangement, is something that I put together quickly and it's just to give you an example of what you can do when you do want to arrange something. Over here is just a bunch of things that I grabbed together, something that we can pull from to use. And from this group of flowers, I made something here. Again, it depends on what your taste is. I just kind of intentionally overcrowded so you can see what you can make. In other words, with the size of the pot, you can go up nice and high, okay? And that's what we did here. I've got the allium. I have the black-eyed Susans in through here. So you've got the dark showing through. And you have the celosa here and we've got some of the catmint. I used some of the catmint that doesn't have the purple on it so it didn't really clash too much with the pink. So more of the dry catmint. But again, this could be all beige, all dry flowers, and then just add a little bit of silver or gold. Um, you can decorate it by using ribbons. We have the piece of burlap here. I love, again, rustic. Just using some materials that you have around the house. This would be great. We have some rope that we use for hanging the herbs. That would be a nice decorative element, or again, or a ribbon. Again, if it's a Christmas ornament, just put the Christmas ribbon around here and tie a nice little bow, or just something you can hang here, right on the inside. Um, again, this ornament arrangement is up nice and tall. 
Again, you don't have to follow the size of the pot. What we can do, if you wanted, and I'll just do this just to show you quickly, if we can get this out, is you can add to it and you can make it as big and as wide as you'd like. Okay, so again, they're really easy to break apart. But if you wanted, you can add. And again, these are dry flowers, so they don't need water. So you don't have to get the base of the item all the way down to meeting the water because you don't have any water in these. So you can just stick these straight through. So instead of going down for your height, you can sit, stick them in the side so you actually have it coming out so that it looks a little bit more like a fountain, like it is fanning out a bit. And again, you can take this with more pieces and just have them stick out a little bit more. And again, so this would make a larger arrangement if you'd like. Okay, and again, just stick them in sideways. And you can do this all the way around or even pick some of the other pieces out and have them come out a little bit further. But again, it's completely up to you. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever your preference is. Um, space requirements or you know what you have and again when you do put arrangements like this together you can tweak it nothing is perfect whether you like the messy look whether you want it perfect um, if you put these together okay you don't want something sticking out just you can just snap it right off so they're really fun to work with um, again walk around your yard see what you have and it's fun again any of these things can be spray painted as well uh, but again I want you to see what the natural look is first and then you can see what you can do when you want to spray different elements. Here is another item and again I repurposed another item. I love this watering can. This actually was a gift that came with a plant in it so we're going to repurpose this. Again the galvanized, I love it. So for here we just cut the hydrangeas. Um, again it doesn't have to be put in water because they're just to dry out anyway. And this is just to show you, you can do it with one plant. If you have a favorite plant, you can do an arrangement of just Allium, which would be gorgeous as well. You can do just Black Eyed Susan. So it's, again, completely up to you what you want to do, what you want to mix and match, whether it be colors, textures, height, width. I mean, this you would have to have a little bit of space, but it's a gorgeous arrangement. Um, we just have it so that it's kind of overflowing of the top, but you can have them hanging off and trailing as well. You could use so many different items and flowers in this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this apart. So I'm gonna actually show you how to make this by taking it apart. So I wanted you to see the finished look first, and then I'm gonna show you how to arrange it, okay? So again, these were just hydrangeas that we took from the yard, uh, from the side yard, and what we do is you can, you can play with it. Um, again, this would be something I would recommend just for indoors, not for outdoors, because they are, they can be a little brittle. You know, we lost a few little pieces moving them around and getting them in here. So uh, we just kind of threw them in. So you want to be a little bit careful with them. But again, for an indoor ornament, this would be beautiful. And again, height, you trim them at whatever the height you want. Usually I'll take any of the excess leaves or branches on the middle, especially if it's something that's gonna be this crowded because you don't want it to interfere with the other plants. Something like this here, you don't take out any of the extra branches because you do want it to fill in. You want it to look nice and full. Um, but here, I just want the look of the actual flower. I'm not, I don't really care about the branches in the middle because all we're seeing is the tops of the plant. So what we'll do is We'll take these apart and I'm putting, taking them apart the way that I put them together. You want to determine how high you want the arrangement or how far apart you want the arrangement. I took the fullest and the nicest forming plants to put in the center because that's what you're going to see first. That's what your eye is going to go to. You don't want to have a discolored piece or a drooping piece or an incomplete or a kind of a squashed piece as your first piece. That they, which draws your eye. So pick your favorite pieces and those are the ones that you want to stand out. And then from there you fill in with, with the next best pieces and you figure out where you want those to go. So if this is where I want my front to be so that 
I have the spigot shown and I believe this is where I figured my front was going to be so I wanted to have another large one but I wanted to show the different variations of the sizes too so I put a large one and put a smaller one a little bit lower a little bit higher and then another small one here to fill in and as the pieces did break off and I did have some smaller pieces that I did cut you can just fill in because as you get closer to the arrangement from far away it looks nice and full but as you get closer you may have some little gaps that you'll fill in with the small pieces okay and at the same time where this was my front and I wanted to make sure that this looked nice I don't like picture perfect um, cookie cutter arrangements so I did different heights and different sizes but at the same time you want to not forget that if you put this on a centerpiece of a table if it's against a wall that's a different story or on a shelf but you want to make sure that it looks decent when you turn it all the way around okay because if you do have it say on a dining room table um, or on a buffet people are going to see the different sides so you want to not forget about the back side again if it's going up against a wall then don't worry about it um, you can actually use that to your advantage by taking everything and filling in the front and then not worrying about the back um, so that would be another another key but again you take out from the top and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you again we don't use water because these are dried plants but what we do do and you can buy them at any floral supply craft stores they have what is the green base and you've probably seen them and they come in two different types you can get them wet obviously if you want to use them for fresh flowers and you want them to last they come wet and you just take the wrapping plastic wrapping around it and you can put them in your container um, so that they actually form and fill in the container and that's the base for you to start your arrangement in this aspect we're not using the wet obviously because we're using dry flowers so what we're using is the dry greens I just call them greens the green blocks so this is a green block okay it's a dry block it's brittle but it's very easy to cut and again you can get them at any you know even material stores you name it um, easy to cut with just a regular knife you can cut it you don't even need a special tool um, or you can just break them apart depending on what size you want to use so obviously we've used it and stuck the <laughs> hydrangeas in this already but ideally you want to start with a fresh block and it's going to depend on what the size again of the container is they usually come in this this is the typical size but you can get them in different sizes and shapes as well um, I like this size because you can cut them and kind of fill in so it's kind of like a standard size so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you from scratch how to put together another arrangement and we're going to do something a little bit more geared towards the holidays okay and again when I talk about containers I will use anything in fact I was cleaning out my garden my herb garden last week and I have some work boots in the back of my truck <laughs> part of my garden clean out I took some old work boots where the sole was uh, a little beat up from overuse and I put them in the flower bed and I use them for um, succulents so they were great they obviously shrunk the leather shrunk over the years but it was in my herb garden for years and it was a cute little accent and people would say whose boots are those or where did that come from and obviously they did shrink but there was a cute little conversation piece in my herb garden as you walk into my back back door so anything that you can think of as a container uh, it's limited it's unlimited I mean um, endless so I love the idea of using trucks even children's toys if you can come across um, and I've been looking for something like this and a friend of mine gave this to me recently and it's exactly what I was looking for but if you can find a child's toy whether it's plastic whether the old metal toys um, even if it was rusted and faded even better uh, that's something that you can keep outdoors and it would look great again either at the foot of your door um, inside the house 
in a garden bed as a centerpiece, it would be great. So you take your green block, and again, since this doesn't quite fit, so what we would do is typically cut it or break it just for time restraints right now. <coughs> Excuse me. As a gardener, I shouldn't be uh, allergic to dust, but guess what? <laughs> I am. So what we're going to do here is, again, we're going to do something a little bit more holiday related and some of the holly. I am lucky enough to have a holly tree, which I'm so grateful for. But anyway, this is fresh holly and it will dry, which is fine because we're not going to be playing with it. So we're going to do this instead of, you see a lot of these little trucks with little Christmas trees sticking out the back. So we're going to do something along that idea as our inspiration. But we're just going to take the greens and we're going to fill this up with the greens. Okay. And you want to fill it up to the point where, and you can do this so quickly, where you don't see the greens. So you don't want to see the greens. And again, you can just use, you know, clippers, trimmers. I'm just kind of a wing it <laughs> and handle it kind of person. So you fill this in. And again, however you want to do it, have it hanging over. Just have a small little arrangement. Um, I would love to do like a big something that would hang over. But again, for time restraints, we're just going to put together a little bit of this greenery. But we're not going to stop with the green. We're going to add something else to it. Something that I brought from the garden. Again, you don't have to be little pieces. They can be little arrangements, little clusters that you put together. And again, see this is something I'm making really quickly. If you take your time and you really tweak it, uh, I mean, you can have it coming over. You can have it, uh, you make it as big as you want. So we're going to leave this like this for now. And what I'm going to show you is how I'm going to take a couple different pieces of materials and make a nice arrangement. Um, the other thing I wanted to add too with this green block, if it's the perfect, if you cut it the perfect size and you wedge it in there, so you want to make it a little bit bigger so you can wedge it in there and then it won't move. The other thing you can do is put a piece of duct tape or other type of taping underneath the block so it'll stick to your container. So that's another nice thing because right now it's moving around a little bit. That's just because I didn't secure it and it's not quite the exact size. So that's another little tip as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take some of our dried plants and because of the white, I thought it would make a nice accent to put with our greens. Okay, so if we stick just a little bit of the white here and there, we'll even take a piece of this that I just cut off, just to have a little bit of an accent so it's not all white, I mean all green. Okay, and again, it's a preference thing. There is no right or wrong. It's whatever you like. Some of you might be saying, ah, oh, it was better off just leaving it with the green, which is fine. But we're just adding a little something to it here just to show you what your options are. Lastly, I mentioned how you can spray paint anything. We took the Black Eyed Susans and actually painted them red. So that's what we have here. So what we're going to do is Obviously, we've got our holly. We don't have berries with this holly. But next best thing, just add some pops of color, some little pops of red. How cute is that? I love this. Love it. So I will obviously work on it a little bit more after the show. But you have your pops of color. And again, spray paint real quick. And depending on how high, and again, I'm, I'm cutting them even shorter than when I originally pick them and just put wherever. So you can do the red, you can do silver, you can do gold. Um, you don't have to stay with just the greenery or the artificial plants, I mean uh, the, the dried plants. You can use artificial items like say some Christmas ornaments, maybe some Christmas balls, things like that just to really make it pop. But again, when you're spray painting things like these, you can do the glitter spray as well, so it doesn't have to be just a solid. I just did the solid silver and solid gold, okay? But again, this glitter spray that can make things really, really shine. So hopefully this gives you some inspiration. Uh, see if you can go out and find another Trek or a unique container like this. That would be great. And again, 
anything like this, the dry arrangements, the hydrangea, uh, this type of arrangement would make a great hostess gift coming up with all the parties for the holidays. Um, hopefully you could take away something new that you didn't know from the show. Uh, there was a lot of information and any of the tips, the projects, the sachets will be on my Facebook page, instructions from start to finish on how to do that. And again, I thank you for all your comments and your input, um, your topics, your ideas that you have. Um, shout out to Greg. Yes, we will be doing an episode on perennials versus annuals before the spring. So for those of you who like to garden but don't really like all the time that it takes to put into a garden, so that way you, uh, what you put in will come back year after year and it's a little less work. So we will do a lot of different things and thank you again for all of your tips and your comments and your topics. Again, we have the contest. If you like and share my Facebook page, Garden Talk with Teresa, and also the YouTube, if you subscribe, then you will have the opportunity to be a guest in the audience and view a taping of the show, of a future show. Okay? Again, thank you very much for watching, and have a great, great week. Thank you.